Hello everybody. Our next camera is the Polaroid Super Color Pack. It was made in 1971 and 1972. It's one of their rigid uh, auto exposure viewfinder cameras. This one takes the originally 75, now 100 if you can still find the Fujifilm, or the 3000 ISO black and white. Like most of their pack film cameras, it has a 114 millimeter lens. This one's F9 or F9.2. Uh, it's three elements and it focuses from three and a half feet to infinity. I don't know if it's plastic or glass. I suspect that it's plastic. I also don't know what the minimum f-stop is. Since this is one that takes the 3000 speed film, I bet it's pretty tiny. Um, I may get in there and measure it, I may not. If I do, I'll add it over to the blog. The shutter is also an unknown, and it's amazing because I have the manual for this guy. It doesn't mention it anywhere. It's probably 10 seconds to about a 500th of a second. 500th might be a little fast, you know, kind of assembling uh, info that I'm finding a little piece here and a little piece there on the web. I found a service manual uh, for the Pro Pack, the last uh, land camera that I shot with, but for this one mostly. It uses the focused flash for the GE high power flash cubes. Um, there was an add-on for the 400 series pack cameras where with the distance, as you get closer, it closes down these shutters to block a bunch of the flash. And that way if it's wide open, you can shoot up to 10 feet. This camera, the reason I wanted to shoot with this one, it has the most bizarre distance finder. It triangulates. There is a black line in the viewfinder and it moves, it's kind of a level. So the idea is that you're standing and you aim the black light at the feet of your subject, then you focus to put the red pointer on the right of the viewfinder in line with the line, then you come up and you should be focused and you take a picture of the face. In the lower left, um, there's also some black they call it a sawtooth pattern. That's to let you know that you are beyond. Great, I think it's. I think it was ten feet, uh, the maximum distance for the flash. So, if you were not average height, and they're calling average height like five feet seven inches. If you were about five feet, you had to do a little dance. And I'll probably get this backwards. I think you had to move a little closer. If you were six feet or over, you had to do a little dance or else just zone focus. It uses two AA batteries and they go way down here in the film department. There's a little latch at the top. Pull it down, slide them in, one up, one down, and then put that back in. And I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and get a macro shot if not. There's a little string you can see at the very top. So in addition to the distance working the shutter on the flash guard, it's what's also moving the red pointer inside the viewfinder. It's kind of bizarre, but I guess that's really all it needed is just pulling on a string to move something up and down. I got the cold clip, which has kind of generic instructions. They didn't do separate ones. It has instructions for ones with distance finders and one without. It has a timer built in. Unlike uh, the last one that I shot with, which was a separate electronic timer, this one is clockwork. You move the dial and then you set your time and then you trigger it. This one runs quite a bit slow, but I think it was just kind of a cheap add-on like all of the touchscreen hooia you see in modern cars. It costs nothing to add, but it seems like an actual feature. One thing that's kind of funny, the flash cube is also clockwork. 
Um, if it's at a 45 degree angle like that with respect to the axis of the lens, that means the clockwork is run down and they want you to plug in a flash cube. This is not actually a high power flash cube. And you see that it's at an angle and then you rotate it until it stops and that's wound up the clockwork motor. It's kind of funny. Um, seems to work though. It doesn't wind properly with the flash cube on it. it. Just kind of moves it a little bit because the base of a high power flash cube is different. I got it in fairly good shape. It still has the T handle, although this model does not have any proper strap or a tripod socket or anything like that. But because it's so simple and plastic, which is easy to work with, this one may become one of my Frank and camera experiments to see if I can use other film in it. Oh, one thing that I forgot, it also has a locking shutter button. You rotate it to the lock, locked icon and it won't push down. It's just a little tab that sticks out. It's super simple, but it's a feature that they could add for almost nothing. So maybe I'll kludge this guy into Frank and camera and I'll see you then. Whoa.